Far Cry 5 is out and we've had our hands on it for quite some time. It's both a very different and familiar Far Cry game at the same time. If you're coming in fresh, we got some beginner tips for you to keep in mind while you're playing. I'm Jake and here are 10 things to know about Far Cry 5 when starting a new game. Starting off at number 10, let's talk about the world. It's structured into three big chunks held by each of the Big Bad's family members. You're free to go wherever you want, but the Southeast Quadrant held by John is a good starting point, I think, because you get Boomer and you're introduced quickly to Nick Rye, and there are just a bunch of other good allies to get there. While we're on the subject, progression in the game works by everything you do going towards filling the resistance meter. Freeing hostages, blowing stuff up, and doing quests and stuff fill this bar in different amounts, and once it gets to certain points, it triggers unskippable story moments that you get locked into. Once the meter is completely full and you beat the big bad in the region, you beat the region. Now just keep in mind though, you're still able to stick around and complete everything else afterwards if you want. But coming to number 9, something very different about this Far Cry is just how a lot of it works systems wise. Far Cry 5 handles progression very differently than the previous games. You're not climbing towers and filling your map with stuff to check off. Here there's no mini map and it's all about more discovery and organic progression to move forward. This means to find things to do, you have to come across stuff in the world. Thankfully there is always stuff, but it just means you gotta be active, you gotta pay attention. Click on road signs to find out where hunting spots are, save a civilian from getting beat up on the side of the road because then you got to talk to her and she'll tell you about say a weapons cache that you should blow up or read a note on the side of a barn to find out where a prepper stash is basically click on everything in the game to get things to do it sounds stupid but some people might not immediately realize that this is how a lot of the game works so i think it's worth mentioning now at number eight, you should learn how to use friends very quickly. Fangs for hire and guns for hire are extremely important here. If you played Metal Gear Solid 5, think of the way those allies work similar here, especially when you want to go in quiet and stealthy. Get Boomer first, he's the dog. Head south from the starting island and set him free, cause then he can creep around and mark enemies for you that you may have missed, and then when shit hits the fan, he can down bad guys for you. Grace Armstrong is worth it too if you head west to the Lamb of God Church. She's good to bring around just cause she's sneaky and she can snipe headshots from a good distance. You then can also go with more fangs for hire, like Peaches the Cougar or Cheeseburger the Bear who can really mess stuff up in a firefight, as well as this uh, crazy blow lady and Nick Rye who can give you air support. There's a lot here to help you out. Not only that, you can recruit random citizens to help you as well. And if you use them for a while, you'll unlock certain perks that make them stronger in a fight. Now at number seven, definitely seek out prepper stashes. Don't ignore these stash side missions because not only are they a good way to earn cash and skill points, but also because they're just creative and fun and offer something slightly different from the usual Far Cry gameplay. There's some really good stuff here. After you pick up a tip on one, you track it down and then often they're like an environmental puzzle worth figuring out so you can get into a secret bunker filled with stuff. Sometimes there's cash, skill points, stuff like that, but sometimes you'll come across a new weapon or a cool new vehicle out of the deal. So so you definitely shouldn't walk past these. Now next at number six, this is a small one, but you can actually throw your melee weapon. It, it took me a second to realize this. Maybe I'm stupid, I don't know. It took me a while to actually realize it, but it works really well if you're desperate. Maybe you have no ammo and you're trying to get a stealth kill. You can pick it right back up after you kill someone or keep in mind, even if you lose it, there are melee weapons pretty much everywhere in the world, so you'll be fine. Now next at number five, I keep talking about skill points and perk points because that's one of the most important elements of the game besides money. And you wanna earn these perk points quicker, so one way to do that is embracing challenges. You might wanna write off challenges when you see them, but they're actually a really, really quick way to earn. These are the usual video game checklists like kill 10 enemies with pistol headshots or melee kills or skydive for X number of distance. Keep these in mind as you play because there are a lot of them and they are a real easy way to get perk points fast. Now next at number four, let's stop and talk about the in-game economy for a second. For the first 10 hours or so, maybe even more, money isn't exactly flying in from all sides. You're gonna be getting money in the hundreds, not really the thousands, so it's gonna be precious, and you're gonna wanna think long and hard about every gun upgrade or vehicle that you buy. And those are the things you should be focusing on. My point is, don't worry about spending money to refill your ammo or buy med kits. It doesn't matter because you can easily find all that stuff out in the world, pretty much everywhere. When refilling your ammo would cost a couple hundred bucks, and every hundred bucks really counts in the early stages of the game, you're gonna wanna go rummage around out in the environment. Just keep your eyes open and you'll always usually be freshly stocked. Plus, why buy Molotovs and explosives and stuff when you can just craft them yourself anyway? 
Now at number three, of course, if you know, if you've played a Far Cry game before, outposts are the crux for every Far Cry game. And while they're a bit tweaked here, it's still the same kind of old thing. Scout out a base, plan your attack, and head in and wipe everyone out and claim it for yourself. But like I was talking about, since money is one of the main things you want in the game, and since it is so limited, you should know that taking down outposts silently, stealthily, and without any alerts nets you a cash bonus, usually of a few hundred bucks. So while you're usually hitting outposts just to progress through the game like normal, keep in mind that if you take it slow, you're gonna make a couple extra bucks. Now down to number two, don't make the mistake I did earlier in the game, don't ignore arcade mode. You can find the arcade machines in a lot of claimed outposts. You'll usually always know they're around because you'll hear a dumb NPC yapping about it. You might think it takes you to optional modes that don't really matter much, but don't brush it aside. It does affect your in-game progression. Arcade mode lets you kind of create your own maps and goof around and have fun, but if you play through some of the created solo levels and missions available in the arcade, it'll increase a rank for that mode, and then leveling up in that rank will net you money and perk points that you can bring back into the main game. And since you want money and you want perk points to get better in Far Cry, you should probably try and hop into arcade mode. And now at number one, let's keep it simple, but we've been talking about perks and we've been leading up to all the ways to get perks. And how should you spend them? This perk system or skill tree is really just how you get better in the game. Most perks are unlocked from the start, so you can really just spend them on whatever you want. It's truly up to you on however you want to spend it, but I got a couple you should work towards first. First, I would recommend more health with health boost one because the game world can really be pretty harsh and you're always getting shot at almost constantly. Also, you gotta save eight points, but the additional holster is an almost absolute must because you feel extremely limited at the start of the game with only two weapons to hold. Then of course there's grappling hook and parachute that are good early on because it really opens it up to a true Far Cry feeling game where you can get around much better. So it's worth considering. Other stuff like the fishing mini game, that's fine, but do you really need to spend perk points onto it early on? I don't think so. It's up to you, but I definitely think more weapons, more mobility and more health are the most important things to focus on. But that really leads me to the end. Those are 10 quick tips we think you should know before going into Far Cry 5 when you're starting a new game. But if some of you have jumped in already, I definitely wanna know what you're thinking. If you have any tips yourself, anything you've discovered out in the world, let's talk about it. And let's talk about anything Far Cry 5 down in the comments. We definitely wanna hear from you guys. But if you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a thing or two, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out and we really appreciate it. But if you're new, you should subscribe because you're joining an army four million strong and we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you you guys next time.